Hi, welcome back to another video from uh, my cybersecurity fundamentals uh, series. Uh, today, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do some configuring and running a Windows update, but I want to talk a few, uh, just a bit before we go into just for about 45 to a minute and a half. So I want, to, want us to understand that with the average increasing number of security threats and vulnerabilities in software products, network admin, admins must be one step ahead of fighting off these loopholes in their computer systems, right? So to help with this Windows update service, they're usually enabled by default. So assuming the computer has a reliable internet connection, of course, important updates to the upper, uh, to secure the OS, uh, new features, um, uh, new features to the Windows OS are managed officially without any user intervention, right? So beginning with Windows uh, 10, Microsoft has started to update the way it publishes updates for the OS. So it's known as the servicing model, uh, formerly called uh, Windows branching. Uh, the the semi-annual uh, channel is a twice a year feature that updates their release. Release around March and September with that, an 18 month servicing period for each release, right? So for example, the lab that I'm using, right? The semi-annual channel is targeted uh, servicing option. The version, version on 1903. Right, so it's a two-digit year, two-digit month, uh, year, year, month, month. Right, so it's the build of one one nine three six two dot three zero. And at the time uh, of writing, when this lab gets updated, its next version will be uh, one nine zero nine, uh, year, year, month, month. Right, <clears throat> uh, jargon. Yeah, whatever. Uh, but I just wanted to. <laughs> I like to give detailed context. So. The semi-annual channel supersedes the current branch, right? And the current branch for business concept starts started with Windows 10 version 1703, and the version that was released for deployment uh, back in July 2017, so about uh, six years, a uh, bit over six years, six and a half years ago. So what I'm going to do today is, is a bit of configuring some of the common properties of the Windows update. So we'll likewise run uh, the manually and examine the parameters on how the installation of updates can be automated in Windows, right? So after completing these exercises, <clears throat> I will be able to enable Windows update services. Right? I'll perform a manual install of an update, right? I'll uh, manually run the Windows update. I'll examine other Windows update options as well as uninstall an update. So pretty, really, really simple stuff. So <clears throat> for enabling the Windows update service, right? So the Windows updated service must be set to manual startup mode before installing the remote server admin tool, right? <clears throat> the remote server admin tool, it enables an admin to remotely uh, manage specific servers in the infrastructure from a computer that has the Windows OS installed. So previous versions of Windows are also supported. Uh, for instance, uh, Windows 8.1, uh, Windows 8, Windows 7, right? At least during the time of this recording, at least. So during the install of this RSAT update, uh, Windows 10 connects to the internet and collects the other updates required, right? So for now, I'm just going to change the startup setting of Windows and update service to manual. Right, so uh, I'm already connected to the VM. Right, so I'm just going to right-click this here. I'm going to hit Run. Right, and then we're going to hit Tools. Actually, strong. Uh, you would think I would know exactly where the um, keys are on the keyboard. I've been using it for so long, but. Let's see. All right, so, so the Windows update service uh, uh, has been disabled for quite some time for this particular lab. I may have to restart the computer. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. And uh, give me just a few moments. I'll have it restarted here. Perfect. So it, uh, that officially has restarted. Uh, thank you so much for your patience. Even there's a quick edit for you. Uh, but uh, now, so I gave I gave it some sufficient time for it to restart, right? So before I continue on to this next task that we're going to do, right? So now we're going to we're going to perform a manual installation of the update, right? So Windows Update automatically downloads the updates in the background, usually uh, while Windows is running. Uh, but since this will take some time, as the lab uh, devices have just been powered on, uh, I'll have to. Well, I don't have to, but I will perform a manual installation of an update instead. So the remote server administration tools uh, or the RSAT is an update available from the Microsoft website. And what I'll do is download the RSAT from the tools and resources intranet and install it onto our lab device here. So I'm just going to type in IE for Internet Explorer. 
and we'll go here. <clears throat> All right, then I'll hit on tools. Then should be able to see Windows 10 down here. There it is, perfect. And I should see RSAT somewhere here. There it is. All right, perfect. And then it should be this one, I believe. And we want to, of course, we want to open that one. Then it's going to download for us. There it should be a Windows Update standalone installer. Yep. And then we're going to hit yes, of course. And then it'll take it just a few moments. And of course, I accept. May take a few moments, but I won't let you guys have to wait like I do. Perfect. So installation complete. All right. Perfect. So just going to close this here. Close that. Now, by re installing the remote server admin tool, it, it, it automatically initiates the download of the latest update for uh, your Windows OS, right? So depending on the size of the update, uh, the download and installation may vary. It did take about, I want to say, about five minutes to do. Uh, around that time range, uh, time frame. So now what we're going to do is uh, manually run the Windows update. So as in the previous versions of uh, Windows, right? So Windows 10 and, and above, it, it's automatically configured to download updates from Microsoft, right? So this setting actually ensures that uh, that the computer is updated with the latest patches that can help protect your system from vulnerabilities and potential risk. Of course, so in this task, we, we're going to manually initiate a Windows update to connect to Microsoft and verify if updates are available for download. So <clears throat> it's going to go to the settings here. Uh, it finally loads for me. There we go. An update and security. Where is it? is here if you update history that is not there it is all right perfect so uh, we also want to note that the output of the uh, windows update screen it may vary due to the availability of new updates if you have an older or newer um, 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 device right so uh, it's just distributed normally by microsoft uh, well always by microsoft and the windows update service was started in the previous task and this enables the windows update service to start downloading the latest updates available so now now on our view update history page here we uh we have a list of summary uh <laughs> a list of summary we have a summary of installed updates on our computer or our vm uh, rather in this case so under the quality update uh, we'll notice that the update for the Windows KB269-3643, uh, uh, that was installed. And this is the update for the remote uh, Windows Remote Server Administration, or RSAT. So we're going to click the back button so we can go back to the, uh, to the settings and we're back on the Windows Update page. Now, I'm just going to keep this open, and I'm going to examine other Windows Update options. So the, the Windows Update service has been configured as one of the most important settings. And this is to ensure that the Windows uh, OS uh, or the computer that has it uh, will automatically download the updates as they become available. So now what we're going to do is examine some of the common Windows update options that affect how updates are downloaded uh, and installed, right? <clears throat> so what we're going to do first is change the active hours. Just want to change it. Instead of 8 to 5, we're going to change it to about 9 a.m. Uh, let's see, there we go, nine, check mark, boom. And we've effectively changed the active hours <clears throat> here from eight to five. Now, we also we wanna make sure that we understand also when changing the active hours, whatever that may be, right? It means that the updates will not be installed during this time, typically nine to five business hours, typically. Uh, so because what we want to do as security professionals, right? Uh, information security professionals, you know, any type of professionals in IT for the most part, right? We do not want to get in the way of business continuity, right? That's first and foremost, uh, above all else, we do, we want to make sure that the business is always able to make money no matter what the issue is. So uh, this, this just falls in line into those, that, that particular kind of unspoken guide. Um, more or less is that, you know, active hours. So 
this is generally with someone that's working. We don't want any updates that can that can wait until after the business day is over, then it could do what it needs to do overnight, right? So uh, now that we've updated the active hours, uh, yeah, it looks like we're back on a Windows update. All right, so now we're just gonna take a look at the advanced options, right? So in the advanced option, we're gonna look at receive updates. Uh, now it looks like it went out. Let me restart it here just a second. All right, perfect. I don't, I don't know what that was. So uh, now for the receive updates for other Microsoft products, when we update the windows, I'm just gonna toggle that on. And then also we'll notice that the receive updates for other Microsoft products when you update windows, uh, it's now set to on. So it went from looking like this to like this and the rest of everything, I'm just gonna leave it at the default where it currently is, right? So just gonna keep the Windows update screen open. Now we're going to uninstall an update. So we're gonna recall that uh, we've uh, we've installed an, updated, uh, uh, an update that added remote server administration tools for managing the server in the network, right? So now we're just gonna uninstall the update <laughs> that we just installed. So we're gonna go back to update history, right? And then we're gonna click on uninstall updates and it should show us exactly um, the one that we have here. I want to say it was this one. Let me see here. Should tell us exactly when it's installed. Yep, there it is. So it is this one. Perfect. Uninstall update. Yes. Perfect. <clears throat> now it should shouldn't take long, really. And then it'll disappear from this window here as well. And I'll go back to the view update history. Come on, come on. Perfect. So you'll see again, it has uh, been removed from the uh, updates, and you'll see the last update was. April 1st, 2019, that's quite a while. You never want to see that in, uh, in real life, at least. <clears throat> so now that we've uh, successfully uninstalled that particular update, now we're just going to uh, get into the next few exercises here. So uh, now we're just going to work with Windows Server updates. So one method of vulnerability remediation, usually on Windows and Linux systems, is applying missing patches. So service packs and updates, uh, most of these can be downloaded for free from the product website of the software vendor, usually. But now what we're going to do is configure uh, some of the common properties of Windows updates. So uh, likewise, run them manually and examine the parameters of how the installation of updates can be automated in Windows. So what we do is we'll run the Windows update on the Windows Server 2019. Uh, and also configure Windows Update settings and perform the actual download itself. So first, we're just going to actually change the VM here. I'm just going to go to DC and actually to do that, we're just going to hit Run, right? And then we're going to place this guy here. Tools. Updates. I know it's already there, but I like typing everything out fully. Uh, so then I'm gonna do this here. System and should be Windows. Um, date. See. No, I have to type it apparently. All right. All right, so now we're back on the uh, page that we were on for the VMware or the, we have the, the dialog box open, right? So uh, we'll notice that on this page that the updates are, are automatically downloaded, right? So what we're gonna do is check for updates, right? It's been quite a while. So we'll see that the message, it'll say some settings are managed by your organization. Uh, to view more, we'll actually click on um, view configured update policies, All right? So we'll notice that the pre-configured update policies are due to two mentioned, two mentioned reasons on this page um, and pretty much 
is here, right? And then we'll go back. And then we'll also be able to view the installed updates on the system. And we can do what we've done before and that's a view update history, right? So the view update history will you know, pretty much see everything here. And the number of updates installed may differ, you know, depending on, you know, your, your particular enterprise or a particular device, right? So we'll see that there are several updates that are downloading and installing, right? And <clears throat> we're gonna go to uh, advanced options here. Now on the advanced options page, uh, we'll see in the update notifications here that it's off, we wanna have it on. So it'll show us everything that's, that's updating right now. It'll give us a notification of such. Hey, it's completed, you know, hey, I'm, I'm done, you know. Uh, so now we're back on the Windows update. So we've gotten it taken care of. Everything is still getting ready or currently installing as we see here, pending install, downloading. And now what we're going to do is configure Windows update setting that's actually performed the download. So in, usually in, in previous versions of Windows, including the one I'm on because it's previous to what is actually current in the real world, right? Uh, it's automatically configured to download updates from Microsoft and the setting usually ensures that the computer is updated regularly, uh, which could help to protect the system from vulnerabilities and potential risks because of the patches, right? Uh, but Windows 10, unfortunately, does not give the user the option to select which update to install as they've been downloaded. So now what we're going to do is configure several Windows settings, connect to Microsoft and verify if updates are, are available for downloads. So while this is doing its thing, I'm going to reconnect to the other VM uh, that we have here. And I'm going to go back to the advanced options. Let's see, here it is. Perfect. Now, uh, on the advanced options, we'll see uh, the choose. Let's see, it should be choose. Yeah, choose when updates are installed section. Oh, darn it, went out on me again. Perfect. So we got everything back up and running. So now I'm going to click under uh, where, where a feature update includes new capabilities and improvement uh, can be deferred for whatever amount we have here for the amount of days. So I'm just gonna uh, drop, drop, I'm gonna change it to um, to one, just one day that it'll be deferred, right? So that's, you know, simple enough. So, and I'll, and I'll keep everything else at default. Now, but by selecting the uh, defer update feature, feature updates, usually may not be installed for that specified number of days and this feature can only be used uh, to install feature updates that necessarily uh, are necessary and tested for the system, all right? So we're gonna go back to the Windows update button, all right? So now uh, the uh, download and install of the available updates will carry on in the background. So anyone that's using the device can continue to use it, right? So uh, now we're pretty much finished up in this particular video. We'll be done. We've done a few things, uh, not too much. Uh, we configured to run up Windows updates. We work with Windows updates. Now we're able to, uh, from this video, we're able to enable Windows update service, perform manual install of an update, manually run Windows update, examine other Windows update options, uninstall an update, verify Windows update status, run Windows updates on the server, and configure Windows update settings and actually perform the download. Thank you again for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.